Welcome to this uh, lecture series on aspects of western philosophy module 36 and uh, lecture number 36. So, this lecture is uh, going to introduce uh, existentialism focusing on its main features and uh, some of the important concerns of existentialism as a uh, I do not want to call it a philosophical moment, because there was not such a moment as such. In that sense existentialism is a very unique and a very different uh, approach to philosophy or has a place in the history of philosophy, because these pictures you can see that you, if you can identify them the, the first one is uh, Nietzsche, we have already examined some of his uh, views. This is Heidegger and uh, third one is this is uh, Sartre. Jean Paul Sartre and uh, here comes uh, this is uh, Soren Kierkegaard. So, they are all different types of philosophers uh, for instance Kierkegaard is uh, Sartre would call him a theistic existentialist and Sartre would uh, define himself or understands himself as an atheistic uh, existentialist and Heidegger is one person who would not probably uh, like to associate himself with existentialism, he rather hated that uh, label of existentialism and uh, Nietzsche is the one person who was uh, active in philosophy when the movement called existentialism was not was yet to come up. So, in that sense you know you can see all these diversity in existentialism and probably one philosopher who claimed himself as an existentialist in this picture is Sartre, who, who actually claimed that he is an existentialist and he has also uh, written a book existentialism and humanism, which is a defense of existentialism, uh, a defense in the sense you know uh, it is an answer to various critics from various directions from the communist, from the Christians, from various other directions. So, in this lecture we will see some of the important features and uh, try to situate it in the context of uh, a historical development both in philosophy as well as in uh, western history. So, it is very difficult to say that existentialism is the result of uh, the works done by a group of philosophers who agreed upon certain uh, common notions and all that very difficult to identify such, such common themes. Uh, yet uh, there are there were attempts even including Sartre try to sort of identify something which can be understood as the most important feature of existentialism which is according to Sartre the dictum. Uh, existence precedes essence, we will discuss that later. So, here uh, there is some sort of a definition or some sort of a description of existentialism, which is given by Charles Worth. Uh, he says I quote, it was one could say more an intellectual mood or atmosphere than a coherent creed or body of doctrine, more an outlook or mindset than a philosophical party line, more a method or approach than a school of thought. And it was very much a creature of the wasteland that was Europe during and after the last two war, last world war. So, this is uh, uh, this keeping this in line this is mind this this particular description of uh, existentialism in mind. Let us move on to identify some of the important features though uh, as I mentioned earlier this is not an attempt to identify some of the common features which which are said to be uh, essential for all uh, philosophers who would identify uh, themselves as uh, existentialists, but just to see some of the features. First one is characterized by a reaction of the philosophy of man against the excess of the philosophy of ideas and the philosophy of things. So, the uh, in one sense this uh, statement implies that traditionally western philosophy has uh, been mostly a philosophy of ideas and philosophy of things, where uh, in that process man get neglected. So, uh, existentialism can be seen as a kind of a response a reaction to this, this feature, it understands existence in a concrete sense of living or lived reality. So, this is another there are certain terms like lived experiences or living reality, these are some of the terms which you will find uh, repeatedly figuring in when you read uh, existential literature, because the focus is on the individual and the concrete manifestations of human existence. What I mean by uh, concrete manifestations are like uh, you know the kind of experiences human concrete human beings have, 
rather than problems of humanity or universal humanity, there are problems which each individual a concrete individual faces in his or her life, day to day life, problems in relationships and uh, various other issues. Traditionally philosophers have never dealt with such issues, traditional philosophy has always been a philosophy of ideas or philosophy of things, but here these thinkers, these 20th century uh, philosophers sort of try to argue that what is more important is man himself or herself. Accuses uh, philosophical traditions of ignoring the concrete man and his problems. So, this is what I mentioned the concrete man and his problems are ignored completely by these traditional thinkers. Now, let us see what is meant by understanding human existence, when existentialists say that what is important is existence of man, uh, they are not interested in an a priori and impersonal conception of human reality. This is again a very important aspect of existentialism, there is a kind of turn towards concrete human existence, the man who exists, the man who lives, his lived experiences, his anxiety, his dread, his worries and problems. So, these are the concerns of existential thinkers, not an a priori and impersonal conception of human reality they are concerned with. Uh, again it is not to understand man in terms of uh, some fundamental rational concepts like what was advocated by uh, philosophers like Plato, uh, Descartes, Kant, Hegel etcetera. For example, in the case of Plato you have this notion of uh, essence. So, Plato as a philosopher conceived what is philosophically relevant, what is philosophically significant is uh, the idea, the essence of man is important, not concrete human beings, concrete human beings he conceived are imperfect copies of that idea of man. So, all substantial philosophical problems uh, deal with these abstract universal ideas for Plato, where does the concrete human being uh, figure in, in such a situation. Again Descartes, where he begins with the thinking the cogito, the thinking I, which is again not a very concrete uh, individual who lives in a world, but it is a very abstract entity. Kant and Hegel all of them you know there is a emphasis on structures of universal rationality in Kant, the structures of mind, the 12 categories and Hegel talks about an absolute in which everything is consumed under, everything is brought under that absolute for Hegel, where there is no scope for anything which is concrete and particular. So, this overdose of uh, universalism and absolutism and abstract theorization would uh, eventually neglect the human situatedness, the human worries, the concrete human being, what Heidegger would uh, term as the being in the world, the world where in the midst of uh, you know things and objects and uh, other human beings with a lot of problems and worries. Focus on the concrete living individual in his actual preoccupation with himself and the world. So, this is what I said. The, the actual relationship between the world of objects and other people and again you know how I preoccupy myself, I mean when I live in this world my self conceptions what I do, the kind of worries I have, I mean the kind of being I create out of this world in which I live. So, through my lived experiences I can put it in that way, so these things are uh, the focal concern and to derive the meaning of the individual man from living or lived experiences of concrete individuals and their surroundings. Now, let us come to some important concerns, again not to identify common concerns, but some important concern which appear uh, here and there in the work in the writings of uh, these thinkers. Live one's life, this is very important because the moment you emphasize on concrete existence of man, you know what you mean by uh, each each individual's concrete existence is unique. So, this is what Heidegger means by authenticity, when he says that when he distinguishes authentic human existence from inauthentic ways of existing, which is again uh, rearticulated by Sartre through his concept of uh, bad faith, which is which is where you inauthentically uh, exist. So, where the emphasis is that you should live your own life 
do not try to imitate others. You live in a concrete situation, you have to take decisions, you cannot blame others for the, your life, what is happening to your life, take responsibility. These are some of the important concerns associated with this. Then again, existential questions are important, death, meaning of human existence, God and man, values in life, nature of relationships etcetera. So, these are considered as existential problems rather than universal problems uh, concerning human essence or universal human nature or anything, anything of abstract nature. These problems are very concrete, you know when I say I am concerned about death, it is about death which affects me, my death or death of uh, those people whom I know. So, it is a concrete reality for me, it is not an abstract philosophical concept. Again, meaning of human existence, what is that meaning? When I raise this question, I would eventually have to find an answer to this question from the context in which I live in this world. So, what things happen to me, all those things that happen to me, my historicity is very important in finding answers to these questions like values in life for instance, my relationship with other people, my relationship with God, all these are problematized and in all such problems you can see the concrete human being comes to the forefront rather than an abstract universal humanity. Questions on the universal and objective values are suspended like essence of man, value and meaning of life etcetera and uh, concern for human freedom and choices and other issues related to this like dread, anxiety etcetera, concern for human freedom and choices like what do you mean by freedom? Uh, freedom is uh, essentially understood by existential thinkers as something which the ability and uh, the freedom to make choices in your life. So, when you make a choice naturally you know you know that you are making the choice and uh, you are anxious about what is going to happen. So, there is anxiety, there is dread, there is a lot of anxiety about what would be the impact or the result of the choice which you are going to make this is a quote from uh, Jasper's book who himself is a very uh, important prominent member of this existential movement. The book's title is philosophy of existence I quote already in the 19th century moments with this turn of mind kept recurring. People wanted life, wanted reality to live, wanted really to live, they demanded realism instead of wanting merely to know they wanted to experience for themselves. Everywhere they wanted to genuine, wanted the genuine searched for origins and wanted to press on to man himself. Superior men became more clearly visible, at the same time it became possible to discover the true and the real in the smallest particle unquote. So, the catch word is uh, instead of wanting merely to know, they wanted to experience for themselves. I would rather identify this as the most important statement in this paragraph which I read out. So, here uh, existentialism uh, has been uh, divided into two classes, two types of existentialism mostly done by uh, Sartre, uh, it is theistic and uh, atheistic. So, the, the theistic existentialists uh, are uh, uh, people like Soren Kierkegaard who is also being understood as the founder of which is not a real apt expression, the most important thinker in the existential movement. In that sense Kierkegaard has been regarded by many as the founder of existentialism, uh, Martin Buber, Paul Tillich, Gabriel Marcel and Carl Jaspers these are some of them, they for them God exists. And uh, the atheist people prominently are uh, Ron Paul Sartre, then uh, Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, Frederick Nietzsche, Nietzsche is again as I mentioned you know it is very difficult to classify Nietzsche as an existentialist, but still Martin Heidegger this is also another uh, very contentious issue because whether Heidegger can be treated as an existentialist he himself which he does not want to be categorized as an existentialist. Then there are others like Albert Camus who are absurdist and also shared a lot of other uh, concerns with the existentialist prefer to distance themselves from the existential movement. And for them God does not exist or is not problematized for Heidegger for, for instance, it is not problematized at all. Hence no values and meaning, since uh, people like uh, Nietzsche and uh, Sartre since they are visibly atheistic 
they would deny the conception of uh, values which are uh, transcendental or metaphysical. There is no such transcendental and metaphysical values or meaning for human life which is fixed a priori. So, they would emphasize or rather Sartre would do it more explicitly emphasizing on you know creating one's own uh, essences through existence, the way one the exists, the choices one makes in one's life and uh, essentially you know one exists by making choices. So, by making such choices one exists and through which one makes oneself. So, that is the process which these people would uh, prominently uh, identify as part of their existentialism and absurdity is another concept which I have already mentioned people like uh, Albert Camus and many others. Again let us come back to common features once again, existentialism was not a rational philosophical system like uh, rationalism or empiricism, I have already mentioned this, it was uh, existentialist ideas were popularized through art and literature as well, philosophers philosophizes not with reason alone. See for instance, Sartre was a novelist and uh, some of his uh, very important philosophical ideas were uh, articulated through novels and short stories. For instance, his uh, famous novel Nausea, which is his probably his uh, uh, first philosophical novel is Nausea and uh, there are prominent stories like The Wall and all, where he expresses the ideas of existentialism through these uh, media. And Albert Camus is another prominent uh, uh, literary figure uh, who is a Nobel laureate for literature. He is, uh, his novels and short stories are they contain a lot of uh, existential elements and, and another very important uh, aspect uh, as I mentioned you know uh, existentialism is not something which originated with one thinker in, in, in the classical sense of the term. It has always been there and you know these philosophers particularly Sartre and uh, Camus and many others they were all inspired by uh, uh, not only by philosophers, but also by other kinds of intellectuals like uh, poets and uh, artists and uh, lit, uh, novelists and others. Uh, for instance, Shakespeare was a major inspiration, uh, Dostoevsky is a very prominent inspiration for existentialist, uh, Kafka, Franz Kafka his uh, short stories particularly his very, very famous uh, story Metamorphosis, these are all very important uh, literature for the existential moment and uh, uh, in that sense it is a very different form of uh, philosophy, uh, there is no common doctrine which uh, all the existentialists would be uh, arguably uh, advocating, begins from man as an existent subject and not just a thinking subject. So, this is this is a very important concern you know it begins with man, man is a not just a thinking substance like Descartes conceived to be, but a kind of existent subject not a substance subject which means you know you, you are living in this world that is why you know this emphasis on lived experiences and lived reality they call it. The man who feels, wills, loves, hates and do many other things in this world. So, it is a being in the world where I exist as a concrete human being by relating myself with others and other objects and the world, the, the world of objects where I hate them, love them and do many other things. Again philosophers who were identified with it were very different from each other as I already mentioned you know Kierkegaard was a theist for his philosophy was uh, predominantly a system where his one of the major concern Kierkegaard was to, to rela the relationship between man and God and uh, for Sartre for that uh, matter there is no God. So, you have totally different contradictory kind of uh, uh, views and uh, perspectives, but still they there are certain very important features which put them all under the umbrella of uh, existentialism. Theist, atheist, phenomenologist, hermeneuticians, absurdist etcetera all these are philosophers who uh, 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 they, I mean different kinds of people who participated in the moment. There are uh, atheist and phenomenologists, uh, Heidegger is a phenomenologist for that matter and hermeneuticians Heidegger again is was in hermeneuticians, absurdists like people like Albert Camus, Ionesco, Samuel Beckett all these people were not academic philosophers, 
Beckett and uh, Ansco for that matter they were uh, uh, they were artists, but they were and there were a lot of painters and other people against metaphysics that is purely speculative. See this is one common feature we can say that you know the overdose of metaphysics which you would find in the philosophical systems of uh, all almost all traditional thinkers you would not find uh, in the these philosophies against systematization of reality because the major aspect of reality which uh, these people are concerned with is the human reality which is a lived human reality which is a concrete human being. And it is very difficult to systematize concrete human being because each human being is different and unique. Emphasis on individuality, again it is a reaction and response to certain important historical and political development. Like any other philosophy uh, there is a kind of very creative uh, negotiation that happens between what is happening in the historical, political and cultural domain and in the domain of ideas and thinking. So, here also we can see that uh, it is a reaction and response to certain very important uh, historical and political developments, a response to certain dominant uh, approach in ancient and modern uh, dominant approaches in uh, ancient and modern philosophy, the importance given to essence over existence. And, uh, it is a reaction against the totalizing philosophy of Hegelian idealism which we have already seen. Hegel consumes everything under the, Hege the, the absolute becoming as a passage from non-existence to existence. Hegel advocates the absorption of existence into essence, everything is absorbed under one entity which is the absolute for Hegel. Now, uh, uh, with regard to the social and historical factors, the loss of faith is a very important uh, 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 catalyst or rather not just a catalyst very actively you know it contributed to the to the uh, existential temperament emergence of this this kind of a philosophy. Uh, religion losing its power which is being described beautifully by Nietzsche in his expression death of God. Then again the two world wars gave rise to feelings of uh, despair and disbelief in all established social, political and moral order. So, the two world wars shattered European what you call foundationalist values system and uh, this ultimately you know resulted actually in that sense Nietzsche was predicting it the kind of uh, faith in this uh, death of God that what is eventually going to happen. And uh, then again this is another important aspect the rise of ideologies like uh, fascism, Nazism and communism none of them reserve a space a respectable space for the individual in it. So, they are all totalizing systems and you can see the way in which political power is so centralized in these systems in fascism and Nazism you know the fascism which originated in Italy Mussolini was the sole leader of fascism and uh, in Hitler's Germany Nazism Hitler was the sole leader and communism again we had seen you know what has happened in Russia like people like uh, again dictators like Stalin have emerged they have crushed suppressed all free thinking and uh, there was no respect absolutely no respect for the individual freedom or concerns of the individual or any of those things. And uh, modernity is all absorbing absolutism characterized by Hegelianism and industrialization and urbanization which eventually made man a tool. See the one of the uh, impacts of industrialization is uh, it is uh, separating man from nature or the kind of relationship man had with nature has been substantially revised drastically redefined with industrialization and urbanization. Because that kind of an intimate association with nature complete dependency on nature was revised to a kind of domination relationship where uh, emphasis was more on controlling nature and changing it to one's own requirements. So, this has resulted in a kind of uh, change of value system complete change of value system which ultimately resulted in uh, this uh, kind of you know social, political and cultural uh, you know events which uh, Europe has witnessed in uh, uh, 20th century. So, here uh, let us see this uh, figure this uh, talks about thinking about human existence traditional and modern philosophical categories are inadequate to understand human reality. So, what happens uh, 
in traditional systems is say for instance here man is understood as a thinking substance or a rational being for instance thinking substance by Descartes rational being which is largely by modern philosophers epistemological subject by rationalism and empirism mind body kind of dualism union whatever which was problematized by the modern philosophers again. And uh, then there are these materialistic tendencies which would identify man essentially as a physical entity. So, in all these things you know where is the man the concrete living man who is in the world relationship with things and other people in this world where is that concrete man in this whole picture. So, that is a question existentialist were raising. So, the uniqueness of the concrete and real as over against the abstract and possible and not on existence as such to our way of encountering existence and not an objective interest in an existence which is indifferent in regard to the multiple existence, but a subjective interest in the peculiar existent which every one of us is. So, this is what when you talk about existence focus of existence does it not I mean it does not mean that you know uh, philosophers are concerned about existence as a very abstract philosophical problem or a philosophical idea, but their concern is uh, not on existence as such, but our way of encountering existence and each one of us encounter our existence differently that uniqueness is being emphasized each one of us. So, it is not an objective interest in existence, but which is indifferent and uh, you know there are but the subjective interest in the peculiar existence each individual what is that kind of concrete human self is the locus where existence is discovered. So, when we talk about the precursors of modern of this uh, existential movement I have already mentioned their names you have uh, uh, Soren Kierkegaard who is uh, uh, the a Danish uh, philosopher then you have uh, Fed, uh, Fedor Dostoevsky who is a Russian writer and novelist whose uh, novels like crime and punishment brothers Karamazov more prominently they contain a lot of existential ideas Frederick Nietzsche which whom uh, whose philosophy we have already discussed and uh, Kafka is another very important uh, uh, writer. So, when you talk about Kierkegaard he pitched it against the Hegelian absolute system which absorbs all individuals and particularities. So, which does not reserve any space for the individual concrete particular human being. So, this is something which he, he challenges for Kierkegaard genuine philosophical experience is a personal experience it is a subjective experience opposes the rational explanations to justify God's existence. Because as I mentioned for Kierkegaard the relationship between man and God is a central problem of philosophy and this relationship cannot be theorized it is something which needs to be experienced by every individual it is an experiential problem rather than a theoretical issue in Kierkegaard. So, this is from Anderson's book it say it, I quote faith constitutes a sphere of uh, a sphere all by itself and every misunderstanding of Christianity may at once be recognized as it is transforming it into a doctrine transferring it into it to the sphere of uh, the intellectual. So, this is his complaint about the established Christianity though he himself was uh, sort of concerned about the biblical God Christ experience of God etcetera. And uh, emphasis was on subjective and the personal choice personal things are more important than objective and universal realities everything is subjective and personal and objectivity is a myth and subjective and personal choice is the crux of human existence there are and, and in this context he refers to three spheres of existence in an individual uh, uh, individual's life which an individual might undergo it is not necessary that each one of us would be undergoing all the three stages, but these are the three possibilities according to him where one, or two, one has to make choices whether to continue in one particular sphere or move on to the next one. And uh, these are the choices the aesthetic, uh, the ethical and the religious. So, the aesthetic is uh, where uh, 
live for physical or intellectual pressure, pressure like Don Juan who is, who is completely immersed in the world of pleasures and uh, where it seeks the most immediately pleasing thing. There is absolutely no concern for something which is uh, deeper and uh, uh, in one's own life. So, the second one is ethical where uh, there is a recognition of some certain common uh, ethical norms, accept moral responsibility, uh, lead a life of duty of moral, duty to moral law. So, there is recognition of duty, recognition of a moral law which is binding to the individual, but even this stage it also has its problems. So, the next stage is the religious stage where uh, life is completely devoted to God and give up everything ethical standards and the universal good everything is given up complete devotion to God. So, that is the highest stage and here uh, uh, the interesting point which Kierkegaard's philosophy tells us is that uh, these spheres of existence are uh, stages of uh, life's ways each containing its own system of values when you are in that particular sphere you follow certain value system and uh, to move from one to another is a personal choice. There is nothing like a common a priori given strategy or uh, requirement that you should go. I mean there is no teleology that binds you to make a choice in a particular way. It is a personal choice which each person has to experience and do actually make it. A choice not guided by any meta principles and a rational leap. So, he says that from one stage to the next is an irrational leap. It is not it cannot be based on certain rational calculations of uh, free choice which cannot be further defended and the individual passionate and discontinuous proceeding by sudden leaps and crisis which he encounters in his life uh, owing to his very peculiar uh, uh, historicities and uh, situatedness. And Dostoevsky as I mentioned is another very important uh, figure very important influence in uh, the existential moment problematized human limitations, agonies, anxieties and helplessness, the human confusions and problems through his novels. This is his uh, masterpiece novel brothers Karamazo. It is a conversation between two characters intellectual Ivan and his brother Alyosha. Alyosha is uh, more a kind of a God intoxicated man while Ivan is visibly an intellectual who lives uh, who, who theorizes. So, let us see the conversation. So, this is what Ivan tells Ilyosha, I quote, you know dear boy there is an old sinner in the 18th century who declared that if there were no God he would have to be invented and man has actually invented God. So, this question whether man has invented God or God made man that is a question that is a problem and again it says and what is strange what would be marvelous is not that God should really exist the marvel is that such an idea the idea of the necessity of God could enter the head of such a savage vicious beast as man again Dostoevsky. Again one more passage from brothers Karamazov and this is again uh, said by Evan uh, to Alyosha and so I accept God and I am glad to and what is more I accept his wisdom, his purpose which are utterly beyond our kin. I believe in the underlying order and the meaning of life, I believe in the eternal harmony in which they say you shall one day be blended, yet in the final result I do not accept this world of gods and although I know it exists I do not accept it at all. It is not that I do not accept God you must understand it is the world created by him I do not and cannot accept unquote. So, this situates the man a concrete man in a context and Kafka is another very remarkable writer isolation of the individual is uh, so prominently characterized by him the individual's place in the world the anxiety and guilt experienced by individuals all these things are uh, highlighted by him and Nietzsche we have already seen you know the way in which he was declaring that all truth is perspectival. And again uh, with this uh, declaration of the death of God how he propagated a kind of nihilism of morals uh, everything is permitted as truth is perspective. There is nothing like the path 
Okay, so, in that way uh, you know he was also advocating a very unique kind of philosophical position. Knowledge and truth are provisional and change over time and with the ruling class and there are many kinds of truths and consequently there is no truth unquote. This is from will to power. So, uh, so, you have a very interesting concept of truth here by Nietzsche. He says truth is an edifying name for what are really vital lies and what Kierkegaard says is objective truth is existentially irrelevant and what Sartre says is no universal truth. So, with this you know let us revisit the key themes uh, of existentialism. There is an emphasis on freedom where we are condemned to be free this is by Sartre very famous statement by Sartre. I uh, will address this problem in the next or some of the subsequent lectures. Then the concept of responsibility because we have freedom in our fundamental projects and attitudes we are responsible for the people we become. So, this is again a very concrete problem not a problem which, uh, which is an abstract philosophical issue which uh, human beings are facing, but a concrete problem which every individual would be faced differently or the intensity would also be different. There are different types of people right, there are different types people's temperament differ from each other. So, accordingly you know the way in which they conceive uh, their problems also would change. Emphasizing individuality his or her search for authentic selfhood is a major issue, ideas of self creation and authentic existence become uh, important in this context. We have already examined how Heidegger problematizes the problem of authentic existence. Then again the, the this problems like angst, dread, anguish, anxiety when we reflect on our freedom we experience this kind of an inescapable anxiety and inauthentic existence and bad faith we have already made reference to those who refuse to take responsibility for themselves and living an inauthentic existence in bad faith. They are self deluded and again finitude, guilt, alienation, despair, death they are not topics of uh, discussion in traditional philosophy, but these thinkers take up them with some very uh, remarkable originality. Acknowledgement of the tragic elements of human existence some are even pessimists and absurdist while some are some others speak about hope. See for instance Albert Camus begins his uh, uh, famous book the myth of Sisyphus with the statement that the most serious philosophical problem of 20th century is that of murder and suicide. See the kind of tragic element is being highlighted and there are of course, philosophers like Kierkegaard who talk about hope. So, you cannot say that you know all of them belong to one particular school, but they all reflect certain common concerns. The, be the best one the, I mean probably the, the ideal candidate for a common theme uh, in the works of all existentialist philosophers would be this existence precedes essence, which is actually I believe it is coined by Sartre because uh, it is in his book uh, in his various uh, articles he has written about it. We do not have a standard existence, but we create ourselves there is a, a lot of emphasis on personal freedom there is nothing like you know I model myself on a universal humanity, but uh, there is nothing like a standard norm given to me on which I can model my existence, but my existence is a very concrete process where because I find myself in a very unique situation which is not there for others and uh, my historicity is different, my relationship context are different everything is different. So, the way in which I create myself since I have freedom to create myself is definitely going to be different from the ways in which other people would be creating themselves. Unlike other entities where uh, their essential properties are fixed a priori human beings make themselves through their choices and actions. And again there is no a priori essence like human nature or essence that determine man, we will uh, uh, probably discuss this again in the next lecture when we analyze, when we try to understand Sartre's position. Again human beings have no model blueprint, no ideal essence or perfect nature for humans, man makes his or her essence first man exists and he or she create the essence. So, this is uh, something which characterizes human existence from other the existence of other objects 
that he first exists and then creates his essence. Unlike other objects say for example, a pen which uh, initially I mean which first the essence of this pen is already there before its creation. The man who created it, the man who produced it must be having a blueprint, an idea about it what is going to produce, but in the case of man there is nothing of that sort. Passions, emotions and instincts are not really irrelevant when I create myself, see it is a process in which I create myself through living, through various things I do, through my actions and thoughts and feelings and emotions. All these things play a very important role in this process of self creation. And uh, there is uh, you know this Nietzsche's concept of will to power becomes extremely relevant in this context and passion to exist Kierkegaard says, Heidegger says that design is mind and is being in the world and Sartre says being in itself and being for itself. We will explicate what this is in the next lecture, but just to mention being in itself is the things which uh, where essence precedes existence, but being for itself is where you know the being of man, where existence comes first and then uh, through living, through choices he makes he creates his essence. So, when we try to distinguish uh, these two important terms, essence is what a thing is, that which is definable in a thing we call its essence. So, when we define an object we often isolate the essence of that object and say that this is what the object is. So, what is intelligible about an object and many considered essence as superior to existence and even absorbed it into essence like Hegel. On the other hand existence is that the thing is not easily definable because it is something which keeps on changing. Again existentialism gives priority to existence over essence and uh, See it is very uh, important to note this distinction that man is rational animal or a thinking substance. There is all an a tendency to essentialize man that man is a thinking being or a thinking animal, rational animal where uh, which denies man a freedom narrowing down human existence to that, but what Sartre would argue is that it is not so. So, there is no uh, in the case of man the existence precedes essence and then I make myself whether I am going to a painter or musician or whatever, it is my choices which would uh, uh, enable me to achieve my essence. Existence is characterized by concreteness and particularity, it implies givenness of a fact the existence of a camera or a pen or whatever you have, its existence is not my creation for instance it exists as something it is, it is there the camera, the pen, the book, the computer they are all there and to exist is derived from the latin word existere uh, which means uh, to stand out or emerge, to stand out from nothing, to exist is to have a place in the world real world, concreteness is asserted, existence is concrete and particular while essence is abstract and universal. So, in this context I mean it is important to distinguish existentialism from essentialism or essentialism from existentialism. Uh, we have seen that you know all these traditional philosophers have been emphasizing a lot on uh, the problem of essence, the problem of abstract essences and uh, uh, essences have always been a central idea in traditional philosophy and uh, where uh, a predominantly you know these traditional philosophers considered existence is illusory, essences are universal and are unchangeable. The notable I mean a striking example is that of Plato, everything is a copy and essences alone are real. Plato conceived only essences as realities and treated existence of particular as illusory, contingent and changeable and Hegel's totalizing philosophy everything is absorbed into the absolute. So, his absolutism and uh, now when you try to uh, understand the concept of existence in existentialism, it is to distinguish the unique way in which man exists in the world, only man exists. In the case of other objects as I already mentioned essence is prior, but in the case of man existence is prior, highlights the ontological peculiarity of man's being, the being of man is uh, 
understood in terms of facticity, thoroughness and particularity. We have already discussed these concepts when we discussed Heidegger's philosophy. What do they mean like facticity, somewhere thoroughness, I, I find myself in a world, in a world of objects and other people, middles of this world and particularity, all these are my experiences, limitations and scopes of man being are the problems here, facticity, thoroughness, transcendence. On the one hand there is facticity, I find myself in a particular situation and uh, uh, to some extent I am constrained by, I am limited to that situation, but at the same time there is a transcendence, like I have certain projects, objects have certain meaning for me. So, I approach the world with certain projects, I have plans, aspirations, desires and then again there are problems like alienation and authenticity must be understood in this context. So, existence for Kierkegaard uh, is uh, uh, the contingent, the particular that which refuses to fit into some system constructed by rational thought and Heidegger calls it man's being, the uh, Zain and Sartre concept of existence unfolds with the explication of being in itself, being for itself and being for others. This will, these concepts will uh, examine in detail in subsequent lectures. So, this are, this is the, let us now wind up this uh, lecture, we will just summarize the topics which we have discussed today. We have seen the emphasis, uh, the kind of emphasis uh, existential philosophers giving to individuality, particularity and subjectivity and there is no conception of objective truth, subjectivity, disclosure and concealment are concepts which were emphasized. We have seen this when we discussed Heidegger, how Heidegger conceives truth as disclosure or unconcealment and when it comes to Nietzsche, Nietzsche says that all truth are, truths are lies, truths becomes, truth becomes perspectival. So, and a perspectival truth is not truth at all. So, these are uh, some, some kind of things which we have examined and emphasis on lived experience like passions, emotions, fears, anxieties, confusions etcetera and then we have seen the kind of tensions between universalities, the situatedness of human experience and the kind of universality, which will be further explicated in the next lectures and thoroughness versus absolute essence, existence precedes essence, which is uh, probably arguably the most important concept and freedom and responsibility are emphasized in this context. So, we will wind up uh, this uh, lecture here. Uh, this lecture on existentialism and introduction it was basically and uh, now we will see in the next two lectures and on the philosophy, the existential philosophy of Jean Paul Sartre who is uh, 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 probably can be considered as the most important philosopher among the, uh, in the in the existential moment. So, we will see that in the next lectures, this lecture we will wind up here now, thank you.